Next Level Pro Wrestling fans, this is your ring announcer, Trey Morgan, here, and I'm here with another episode of Time to Talk with Trey Morgan, and this week, my guest, the record, Travis Weaver. Travis, thank you for being here on the show, sir. Well, yeah, appreciate you having me, man. Yeah. I saw you had Buck last time, and Buck's my boy, and he's like, I, he, he did an audible. I was supposed to be here by the long night, bright lights, big city, long nights, big opportunity. Things like that, so I couldn't make it. So Buck stepped in last time, so I'm glad to be here. Oh yeah, thank you for being here. And, and Buck did a great job. We had oh. a we had a fantastic top here last time. I got to follow that. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be it's gonna be tough. So yeah, um, let's go ahead and talk about your partners. You know, you're one third of Bootleggers Inc. here mm -hmm. at Next Level Pro Wrestling with your tag team partners Buck Wild and somebody who's recently joined you guys is Chris Weaver as well. Yeah, yeah. So. It's this won't this won't nothing I expected to happen, especially like in the past month or two. Uh, Buck, he's been with me s about a month after I came to Next Level. Yeah, I came January twenty twenty three was my first time being on Next Level show. I didn't even know about it. I showed up because I saw a friend or two of mine on the post. I was like, I ain't seen them in a few years. Wow. And then I showed up. They put me in a match. Like, hey, we still train. Like, I was like, oh, so now that's how I became Next Level more or less. There's, we go into that more later. Sure. But then February, March, I think it was, Buck showed up. He was doing the, at the 2-6, he was doing the Sunday schools, and I was only able to make the Wednesday classes. So yeah. we never interacted until, like, he just went to one of the shows, and we just talked. Everybody else went out to intermission to sell stuff and, like, meet the fans. And, like, we was at Falcon, and them kids hated me. They wanted my blood. So I was like, I'm not going back out there. So <laughs> it was just, just me and him in the locker room, and I just, like, looked at him. And just immediately, it's like he's wearing the can. He he don't put no put on. He is who he is. Yeah. And I was like, you know, you're an interesting looking guy. And we just started talking about all the patches and stuff on him. And like we was just vibing. And like from that point on, we was boys. And we immediately started talking about like, hey, when you get polished up a little bit, the tag scene here could use a boot in a proper place or two. And you know, it's like when we both wear boots, you know. Yeah. So. And that's how Buck more or less, that's how bootlegging started. It was mostly me and him uh, in the background, you know. Yeah. And then Chris, we got history. Like Weaver, when I started years ago, 2014, 2015. Okay. Yeah, yeah, this is, yeah. They asked me how long I've been in the business. I say between four to 10 years, depending on who you ask, you know. There's a lot of gaps in my resume, but. Showed up to school years back, first getting into it. He said, hey, I'm Chris Nemesis, but my real name's Chris Weaver. I was like, my name's Travis Weaver. And it's like, we had the same last names. We look into it. it goes, the, the, the roots of the family tree run deep, you know what I mean? Yeah. So he's like my fourth cousin twice removed, give or take. Wow. So, and then we were boys. Like, you like hair metal and Camaros? I'm like, yeah, I'm just boys, you know? So Chris is my cousin. He took a break for a while, too, and his daddy came to a show, saw that I'm doing it. It's like, you're back? I'm like, yeah, I'm back. It's like, well, Chris, he he keeps up with it, but like, he don't really want to get back into it. It's like, why not? A month later, he showed up, and here we are. His dad talked him back into it. I was like, you know, you know, Travis is out there, and he's doing good. And then he showed up, and like, we're just, it's six years in the making finally happened when we were done. It's like, give or take six years in the making. We finally teamed, and like, that was... I know there's a pretty good picture they posted on the, the next level thing. Yeah. And Chris is just ready. Buck's being Buck. And I just got the biggest smile on my face. Yeah. yeah. That's probably the happiest I've been in, in wrestling since I started. Well, so, you, you, know, you know, you're, you're definitely welcomed here. And, and uh, the fans, the fans have taken to Bootleggers Inc. It like, took I'm a while. Saying, yeah. Yeah. But, but once you got them in your hands, man, like you have them eating out of the palm of your hand. It's. I don't know, like when we first started Bootleggers, we were kind of, we went to Falcon shortly after we formed, and I've never gotten death threats from an eight-year-old before, so that was a fun experience, Wow! but like, we went from like getting the most hate to just like, now it's like you hear the first banjo, and like just all of a sudden, wow, and that's just amazing, just 180 turnaround, and you know, like, we're here for it, you know? Yeah, uh, the Bootleggers are, are fantastic. Okay, so let's talk about, you mentioned just a few minutes ago, back in 2014. Let's go back to when you got into the wrestling business. How, I'm pretty sure, just like 
everybody I've interviewed and myself, you know, we watched wrestling when we were little kids. Watched it. It was like, I want to do this. Let's go back to, to your childhood and when you got into the wrestling business. Who is some of the people that, that you looked up to that you thought were the first preacher that you seen? It was like, that's what I want to do. All right. So going back to when I first learned what wrestling was, I was like maybe five or six years old. And my grandma asked me, do you like wrestling? And I was always told, never tell your grandma no. So I didn't want to make her mad. So I said, yeah. And she got me two action figures for my birthday. It was Hollywood Hulk Hogan and Wolfpack Sting. And I didn't know nothing. I was like, I, the red guy looks cool because he's Sting with the Wolfpack. Yeah. And then, like, my mom started telling me about it and then saw it on TV once or twice. And so, like, I had the Sting action figures. Like, Sting's cool. And I started seeing them on TV. This was, like, during late 90s WCW, yeah. which was yeah. hit or miss. Yeah, Monday yeah. Night Wars. Oh, oh, man. That was the greatest time. But, yeah, seeing Sting, I was like, just the dude with the face paint, just the big characters. Like, I want to be like Sting growing up. And then, you know, like, when I started to get bigger and everything, I was like, I want to be like the big show. Like, because I'm six foot something or another, give or take. And, you know, just, that's why I do the show slam. It's because I saw Big Show do it all the time. I was like, that was cool, you know? Yeah. And nobody wants to take that eight foot ride down. You right, know? Being, being one of the biggest men here on the roster, you know, that's about a big drop, you know, when, when you get them all the way up into the right. sky there. So, and then like getting more into wrestling, seeing Undertaker go from like the dead man to dead man ink where he's got the motorcycle and everything. It's like that was, that was really one of my big inspirations when I was younger, just cause it kind of reminded me of my dad a little bit. It's like, he's a big dude who rides a motorcycle. It's like, oh, that guy's a big dude that rides a motorcycle. So Undertaker, Sting, Big Show, like those were some of my first, like, these are my guys. You know what I mean? And like, if you watch me in the ring, you can see it a little bit. Not so much Sting though. They won't let me paint my face. <laughs> so, and so moving up, you're watching the Undertaker and guys like Sting and Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Move a few years later, you finally get into the age of, wanting to be in the wrestling business, possibly finding somewhere to train. Let's let's talk about that there. Ooh. See, back in the day, the internet wasn't as good as it was now. Right. So, like, looking for schools. Like, the nearest, like, it would just bring up all the big schools, like, oh, Monster Factory up there, up north, and, like, the Chikara Wrestle Factory, and, like, Santino Bros in California. And, like, the Dudleys have a school in Florida. It's like, I can't make those, you right. know, trips. Then there was like, oh, there's uh the Stro has a school and it was like crazy expensive. And anyways, by the way, shout out to the Stro. I hope you're doing better. I think he had a heart operation or something a year back. He's still doing good. Yeah. But like it was Love you, buddy. <laughs> it was uh it was hard to find a school. And then my mom showed me a, a newspaper clipping and it was like there was one not too long, not too far from me. Went to a show, saw what it was about, I was like, all right, this looks decent. I got into it. And you know, that's where I met uh that's where I first met Chris. That's where I first met Hang Time. That's where I first met a couple of the guys who are now like the cornerstones of Next Level. You know, some of our people you, you may know. Like the first match I ever saw was Chris Nemesis, who's like, that name is dead and gone. Do not call him that or you will get all bootleggers ink on you. Chris Weaver versus Crazy Horse, Brian Sanders. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first thing I saw when I walked in that building. And like now those are like some some good people I know, you know, but like started training out. I had to take a break because of family things. I took like three or four breaks in my career. Sure. It's never, if you ever get into wrestling, you're worried. Wrestling will always be here. Wrestling's always been here for me. Wrestling will always be here. Remember that. And uh, yeah, I finally got into it, started training like hardcore for a few months. Had my debut match. It was like a 10-man battle royal. Victor Andrews was in that, I think. I don't know. It was a while back. I got hit in the head a lot since then. <laughs> but, yeah, started training. Started doing shows. Finally started to find my way. You know, I had a pretty couple good matches in my first rookie year. Uh, I had a match with uh, Earl Hebner. Wow. One well, of my first main events had Earl Hebner in as a special guest referee. Wow. So that was that was a big deal to me. Well, tell, well let's, let's don't we're not just gonna move past that. That's a big thing there. Earl Hebner, legendary uh, WWE Hall of Fame referee. We call him Uncle Earl. Uncle <laughs> Earl. <laughs> so let, let's talk about about him coming here to next level. Uh when I first heard about like Earl Hebner is like gonna be here, it's like Earl. Yeah. It's like that man's been around like everyone. You name a big main event from like the mid nineties, like Earl He's was refereed there. the who's who. Yeah, it's like 
Oh, yeah, he's been there with Hogan and Andre. Yeah. He's been in there with Stone Cold. He was in there with The Rock. Like, the man, the man's a wealth of knowledge. I'll tell you that much. Just listen to him. Just, just listen to him. You don't even have to say nothing to him. Just, like, be one of those weird guys that hangs out around the corner while he's talking to someone. You can learn so much. Earl is just underrated, I think. Everybody knows the name, but I don't think anybody gives him the respect that he needs for, like, what he's done in this business and what he still has to give. Because we've, we've had him here to tell the boys and learn them a thing or two, you know? Yeah, he offers advice. You know, we, we, we tell everybody, if we bring in people like this, our legends, pick their brain. Ask them to watch your match, you know, because cause they're the ones that's going to make you better. Say, hey, maybe you could have changed this and did this, you know? So it's something you, you might not have thought of that he's seen before and uh, just a little tweak could make it ten times better. It's, yeah, so having Earl Hebner, if y'all see the trailer... My face is on it. I'm right above Earl. So that's a, that's a big honor. That's a big honor being on the trailer next to Earl. I was like, look, that's me. That's Earl. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, whenever Earl shows up, it's a good time. It's always good to see him, you know, but yeah, it's Earl Hebner, man. Yeah. So let's continue. So yeah. you seen Earl Hebner was in one of your first main event matches there mm -hmm. uh, here at Next Level. So yeah. or in wrestling, excuse Love me. Wrestling. Yeah. So continue. Well, yeah. So that was, uh, Big moment for me was I had Earl Hebner raise my hand. I won the match. It was a tag match. I'm trying to remember everyone in it. Again, I got hand to head a lot. That's I need to stop. I need to stop having that happen to me. That's why I got a tag team now. It's their turn. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but like, wrestled for like about a year after that happened and just, just tried to find my way. Really tried to learn because I was really green. Year or so in the business, life happened. I'm going to say that. Sure. So I took a four year break. So, and during that four year break, COVID happened and the world shut down basically. Yeah. So, like, whenever I was finally getting back on track, I was in the gym like an animal. I was in way better shape than I was now. And then COVID hit and everything shut down. Like, ugh. I got up to 280 pounds at my peak. Wow. And that's right before everything opened up. And I remember. Finally getting back in the gym with my one goal of getting back to this. <laughs> you do not know how happy it makes me that next level is here for me. It's okay to cry every now and then. Because it's okay to get down and get back up. I was down. I was down. One of the few things that kept me going was wrestling. I'd always see AEW came out. The happiest moment, one of my darkest times. I wanted to see that. I'm glad I was here for it. COVID happened. Wrestling was still around. It was always there for me. I almost lost my job. Wrestling was there to keep my mind occupied. I got my job. I kept my job. I got a better position. I kept making strides. COVID kind of toned down. The gym opened up. Where they moved me, there's a gym five minutes down the road. They reimbursed me to go to the gym. Start hitting the gym. Start losing the weight. Found a little place not too far from my house that had a wrestling ring in it. Out of nowhere. Three minutes from my house. It's like a sign. I go there, I knock a little bit of the rust off. Things weren't exactly green there, I'll tell you that much. This is why I ain't there no more. But I started looking on Facebook, because I, I I got rid of Facebook. It was so just depressing, seeing a lot of stuff. One of the few bright spots was seeing my friends who were still wrestling. It's like, just came back from New Jersey, had a match, just just won a title at this new promotion, seeing my friends do that. It's bittersweet. Finally looked up there to see how some were doing. I saw a poster for Next Level Pro Wrestling. I didn't know what that was. But I saw three faces up there I knew. And it was in Dunn. Dunn is 25 minutes from my house. I showed up there. There were so many boys from back in the day. As soon as I walked through the door, I think half of them thought I was dead. It was like seeing a ghost. Even though I was gone all those years, they were so happy to see me. This promotion means a lot to me. I work for a lot of promotions. 
I'm trying to get on more, trying to make my name. But at the end of the day, next level promotion, next level pro wrestling is my home. There's a lot of people here I respect, a lot of people here I love. Next Level Pro Wrestling has been here for me. I'll be here for Next Level Pro Wrestling. It's good to have this 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 support system with the boys. Anytime someone goes through something, stuff like I went through, we're there for each other. That's right. Even if we don't see eye to eye each other in the ring, we've always got each other's back one way or the other. That's right. So I just went on a tangent there. That's, fine. <laughs> hey, that, that's perfectly fine. You know, it's, yeah. it's showing showing emotion. You know. The, the mental part, you know, people always say a lot of times, not always, men are supposed to be strong. Men aren't supposed to show their emotions, but that's not the day now times, you know, you have to show that you have to let it out, you know, cause the more you keep it in, the worse it's going to get. Right. I remember, I remember when Eddie Guerrero passed away and they had everyone lined up on the stage I saw all those big heroes I looked up to, great men, and they were crying. I know everybody goes through it. I seen bigger men than me break down. I seen big men have each other's back. And that's what we're here for, you know? So that's why I like my boys in bootlegger, ain't? We're always there. I get a call at nine, 10 o'clock at the night. Hey, Bo, how you doing? Doing good. You know, just checking in on each other. So proud to have that. So happy to have that. I wouldn't have that without Next Level. That's right. So, and we're, and we're all here for each other. You know, yeah, so. you know, we can call anybody. It don't matter. You can call me. I could call you. We could call anybody here. You know, if we need to talk to somebody, we're a family. You know that that's that's what pro wrestling's about. It's not about always being me against you, you against this guy. We're still a family. You know, we we still want each other to go home the same way that they walked in the door. You know, we're here to entertain the fans, you know. Yeah, man. That's what's about. That's what we're here for. Absolutely. All right. Change the subject. Let's, let's, like let's, move on, let's move on to something else. But, Edit all the crying out. Yeah. <laughs> but you're good, brother. All you right, know, man, we good. love you, man. <laughs> so let's move on to something bigger and better. Let's talk about next level pro wrestling here. We'll move on to Tony James. Tony. Tony James here. He's the owner of Next Level Pro Wrestling. Let, let's let's talk about him for just a second. All right. What do you want to talk about him? So you know he owns the place. He can fire both of us real quick. Real quick. I think I've been fired three times in the past three shows. We got no one guy that's like he's on his ninety eighth time. <laughs> you know, but Tony's great, man. He like he he does so much for us here at Next Level Pro Wrestling. Mm -hmm. You know, he he sees so much in in his students. You know, mm -hmm. so what, what, what's your, what's your thoughts? What's my thoughts on Tony? We go way back. Like he was, he's, he's one of the first people laid hands on me to learn, learn me what I know now, like my basics, you know? Uh, so he's one of the reasons I came to next level and really stayed. Like once I saw that he was running the show, it's like, really? And then I learned about two six and like, he's running that too. It's like, all right, this is the place to be like without going to, you know, there's there's a lot of good schools here in North Carolina, but for my money, dead heart center of North Carolina is Fayetteville. And center of North Carolina, this is the the heart of North Carolina, and this is the place to go for training. Like, the, the knowledge the man has, just anything, just from your old school style, he's, he knows about, like, all these different styles. So sometimes we're in here doing lucha, sometimes we're learning some of the Japanese stuff. Like the way they just the way they're taught overseas and stuff. He was been overseas. His knowledge is just it's like with Earl. You know, he's been around. He knows something. You got a question, you want to figure something out, ask him. It's just and he's always there for us, you know. So Tony, he's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's talk about a few more uh gentlemen that we have here in our singles division let's talk mm -hmm. about the next level pro wrestling champion oh jack Tatum. jack, the jack Tatum? Tatum. yes what you want to talk about jack Tatum? because so, you know like the editor's gonna have to edit in a lot of bad words if we're gonna talk about jack Tatum. okay i understand that he so, tried to stab back, me with a screwdriver yeah back in last time we were in rayford. we were in rayford yeah. yeah we're going back to rayford we are going back to rayford yeah. we'll be there june 22nd ladies and gentlemen we'll make sure that we see you there yeah bell time 715 by the way we're hit all the screwdrivers yeah so but, you had a match with jack tatum there at 
Rayford, National Guard Armory. So what happened was, before, Jack was Buck's debut match. Buck was finally polished up enough that like he could figure out how wrestling works. There's a difference between a bar fight and a wrestling ring, you know what I mean? Buck can handle himself in both, but uh, one of them, I don't know, you're not allowed to gouge the eyes as much, you know what I mean? Yeah. So Buck had a match against Jack, and I think Jack got mad that Buck was getting the upper hand on him. And towards the end of the thing, he pulled out a chair, and he tried to end Buck before he really got started, you know? And that don't fly by me. So that sets us up for Rayford. You know, it's like, you want to do that to my boy two months ago? Because it was Ray- we did Dunn, uh, 71st and Fayetteville, then we went to Rayford. It's like, I won't even worry about the title. That won't even a factor at the time. Because you laid hands on my boy. And so, like, and he, he planned it out. I know Jack. Some people don't know Jack, but I know Jack. So, to you, that match was just revenge? That match was a setup. Yeah, I know what he was doing. <laughs> He's he made the match bootlegger rules no rules whatever in his little little promo where he called me out I knew what he was doing his first defense is a title he want to take out the biggest guy at next level but like it's really hard to put me down all right I'm like Jason Voorhees you need a shotgun to keep me down I'll probably sit up again and that's about what happened he hit me in the head with steel chair wrapped around my head I just grabbed him by the throat let's see what else he hit me with he hit me with a hubcap. Strain me with a tire iron, power bomb me through a, a door, splinters all down my spine. Yeah. And when that didn't work, he went out to get the <clears> real <throat> hardware and tried to stab me through the head. With and a brother, screwdriver. Yeah, with a screwdriver. Now, I appreciate the tenacity, don't get me wrong, but I'm the wrong man to, to go after for that. Luckily, brother Buck was there. He knew too far was too far, but Jack's got some shaved grill on his side. Now, what's his name, Jared? Jared. Jared, yeah. yeah. Had Jared come out. Had a backup plan. He wasn't so sure of himself. Jack, I'll tell you this right now. I really wish we could have a cage match one day, but I ain't worried about you, Jack. Right now, you're on the back burner. You're still in my peripherals now, son. But you're still there, Jack. I'll get Jack one day. We we gonna square up. So we're gonna move on to mm-hmm. another one of we're not we're gonna go into tag division now. There we're we go. gonna the one that you're more familiar with. That's where I live right now. So we're gonna speak about your most re- one of your most recent opponents. In back in Dunn, you you Bootleggers Inc. had a three on two handicap match with the next level pro wrestling tag team champions, the Indy Icon Trajan, and the Pitbull, Pembroke Pitbull, Baron Bullard, Team Pitbull. <laughs> So you guys were successful in that match yeah. that beat Team Pitbull. So do you see you guys as moving up to be the number one contenders for those We beat the tag team champions, non-title, a little bit of an or- unorthodox match, yeah. But you beat the champions means you beat the champions, one way or the other, you know, by hook or by crook, you know what I mean? But the match said bootlegger Inc. versus Team Pitbull. That's what said on the card. And, like, no one informed anybody that there was, like, three of us active now. So, like, we all kind of went out. It just kind of happened. So, like I said, we're, we're, we're the new age free birds. That might be too big of a brag, but, like, I'm going to brag all day about it. Pick two. Me and Buck, the OGs. You get the Weaver boys, Travis and Chris. I want to see what Chris and Buck will do. Pick two. Pick two. Either way, all three of us going to be holding them tiles up. And, one way or the other. And Team Pitbull, you know, they have four members of Team Pitbull. When that happened? They, they've had four members for I've only seen two of them here, though. Right. That, no, but that's the thing. That, they have four members. It was their choice not to bring the other two when they know Bootleggers is going to have all three guys at their show. All right. Well, and they like a game plan this now. All right. So, cool. yes, they're just, there are four men in Team Pitbull. All right. Send them all. See what happens. So we're going to talk about another tag team here that has formed here recently with the team of Paradox and De Leon X. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, here here recently they took out the Alpha J Wolf and El Ultimo Soldado. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Yeah. So it's a relatively new team. I don't really think I've seen any of their work yet. I ain't seen them have as much experience as a team yet. Like I say, me and Buck, we've been running together for a year and some change now. Like, that's it. Me and Chris, we go way back. So that experience is going to be an edge. But I ain't discounting. 
Paradox came out of nowhere. I only seen him about three or four times, and each time he's impressed me, impressed me, impressed me, impressed me. Absolutely. Daily on X is a little unpredictable. And you can't be that big and be unpredictable without being dangerous. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Is he going to swing that cane wrap around my head? Mm. So that's a, it's, a, it's a formidable team. I want to see what they can do. I don't want to see it firsthand just yet, but that's a fight that's going to happen. That's going to be a fight worth watching. So they're in the radar. I want to see what they do. Okay, Travis, so let's move on to coming up June 22nd. We were just talking about Rayford National Guard Armory previously. Mm -hmm. And here in two weeks, we're going to be back June 22nd at the Rayford National Guard Armory again. All right, well, Rayford, I'm looking forward to Rayford. Last time I was in Rayford, I had the heavyweight title match. Didn't end the way I wanted to do, but like, hey, it happened. So Rayford is a, is a place of opportunity. And like you said, we beat Team Pitbull. We already we already made a video calling them out when we uh when we did the Harley show. At the Harley I show. I like the Harley show. Yes. When we going to do the Harley place again? That was nice. Hopefully we get that one again. Right. That was fantastic. Love the Harley place, guys. Uh, what was it Fort Bragg Harley? Fort yeah. Bragg Harley. Davis. Yeah, that was a fun place. So what we was out there. We we did a we did a show for free. You know, big event for everyone to big come event. out. You know, and while we was there, I was there with the bootlegger boys. Like we was like, we need to call up pit bull. We're having a good time, fun in the sun. Let's go ahead and call up pit bulls because we beat them. Three on two, like I say, pick two. Pick two. So that's why I'm hoping. I'm, I'm going to talk to management. I'm going I'm to push it. We beat them. Non-title. Put the title on the line. See how hard we fight for it then. I. It's, it's been a long time coming because we lost the titles. We were one of the longest reigning next level pro tag team champions, Blue Layer Inc. Now, I think Team Pitbull's about to edge us out on that. I want my record back. I want my titles back. Okay, so we were speaking just a little bit ago, Travis, about being in Rayford at the Rayford National Guard Armory. June 22nd, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming back to Rayford National Guard Armory again. All right, Rayford, last time I was there, heavyweight title match. Didn't end the way I wanted to, but we're going back. Just beat Team Pitbull non-title. Bootlegger Inc. Pick two of us. Two of the three. I want the titles. I want the titles. Used to be longest reigning next level pro tag team champions. That was back in November when we lost the titles. I think they're about to beat me for the record. And I want my record. And I want my titles. So we're going to come for them titles. I'm going to talk to management and see if they're going to give us that match. But like, that's why I got hoping for Rayford. Whatever comes, comes. All right. We're going to come out on top. But Rayford, I want to hold the gold from my boys at bootlayering. That's what I'm looking forward to. So, Travis, as we come to the end today, I give everybody, all of my interviewees, their shot. They, I call it the call out. Mm -hmm. What it is, is we let you call out anybody that you want. It can be from the company in New York, the company in Atlanta, in Florida. It doesn't matter. You call out anybody you want. This is your time to talk. You know, they say anything's possible in the world of wrestling. I'm going to keep it a little realistic. I ain't going to call it no million dollar name. As far as tag teams go, you know who I want. Because that's going to happen. As far as singles, for me, there's two names that I've crossed path with a lot in my short career. As far as I'm concerned, it ain't a long career. But I've never had a one-on-one -on -one with either of these men. It's always been some multi-man, a tag, Royal Rumble, Battle Royal, whatever you want to call it. So the two people... Here in next level that I want to face, CJ Evans never had a one on one with the show. I want him to show me something. Now, we had something at Falcon a year or so back, number one contender for the title he now holds, the social media championship. He beat me. He beat me. It was a multi man, four man, I think. It came down to me and him in the end, but he just did beat me. So let's see without the X Factor, CJ. Let's see without the X-Factors, buddy. We'll see who wins on that one. And this name, I've been around a lot. Never had him one-on-one. -on -one. Hang time. How come that ain't never happened? One-on-one. -on -one. Oh, yeah. Let's see if you got any gas left in the tank. Handle the record. Well, Travis, we want to thank you for being here on the show today. 
Uh, do you have any social media that you would like to plug in case anybody wants to be able to follow Bootleggers Inc. or find out where you guys are going to be here in the future? All right. Well, uh, as far as social media goes, we've got uh, Facebook pages mostly. I've got uh, the Bootlegger Inc. Facebook page. It's got the logo. Hang on. Let me grab the, the shirt. It's yeah. got the logo. I got, show your merch. I got merch, too. Come on now. Brake pads ain't cheap. Bootlegger Inc. Follow us on Facebook. We got this logo on it. Here, I'll hold that right yeah, here. Hold that. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'll put that look right there. That. You look like them people on Price is Rife showing off everything. What else you got? Let me see. Buck got these neat hats made. They're good. They make my hair fluff out a little bit, but they're nice. Uh, let me see. These are a hot seller. The kids love these. These are the flask. Support your local bootleggers, kids. Let me hold on. Let me check that out. Stainless steel. Stainless steel bootleggers yeah. ain't flats, man. That's not. Yeah. How much are these? I'm, I might have to purchase. Ten dollars a pop, man. Before I leave today, I might ten dollars a pop. Them. We ain't gonna gouge you on that, brother. We know how hard it is to be a working man. You can put anything in there, anything. Uh, and then finally, this is the prototype. I got a good friend of mine working on these bad boys, but these. Or Travis, the record weaver shirts. Look at that. It's got my face on it. If I was a skeleton, I think that's cool. But yeah, prototype right here. We're cleaning it up a little bit. Look for these available at next level pro wrestling events and uh, flea markets and swap meets everywhere. But that's about what we got. Follow me on Facebook, Travis, the record weaver. I don't know how to change the name, so it's stuck like that. It's kind of hard to find, but it's got my pretty face on it. <laughs> Well, Travis, I want to thank you very much for being here on the show today. It was a, we had a, I had a great time. Yeah, man. And so time. thank you very much. And hopefully sometime in the future, once you win multiple championships, we'll have you back in here. Ladies and gentlemen, please make sure you follow us on all of our social media, on Facebook at Next Level Pro Wrestling. Check us out on YouTube at NLPW and 26ProWrestlingAcademy.com. Make sure you're checking out Time to Talk with Trey Morgan, the brand new podcast that we have out. This is episode number eight that we're having, and we do have more coming out here in the future, so make sure you check us out there. Check us out on all of our social media, and make sure, June 22nd, ladies and gentlemen, we will be at Rafer at the National Guard Armory. Bell time is 7.15. Tickets are $10 at the door, so we want to make sure you see you there. Travis, again, thank you for being here, sir. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us here with Time to Talk with Trey Morgan. We'll see you on our next show.